if we look at everyone, CB, even some of the best scientists in our field, it looks like they have this incredible set of impressive achievements and especially a long list of publications. However, if you would look at their CV, including the rejected publications, that CV, I'm sure, would be much, much longer. Hello, everyone. I know that we have all been there. After working for months or even more than a year on a research paper, we finally submitted, waited for notification, and when notification comes, the paper is rejected. So this is one of the hardest things to deal with in academia, especially when you are a student and you are just submitting your first papers. So in this video, I want to provide you a guide on how to handle rejections, also try to understand what are the reasons behind the rejections, and then provide you some suggestions on how to avoid your paper to be rejected again. Before we start, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel since more than 80% of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed. And this would really help this content reach a wider audience and help more students. Thank you very much and let's get into it. Let's first focus on how to handle rejections. So the first thing you should understand is that rejections are extremely common. So for example, I've been in charge of several IEEE conferences and IEEE as a policy for which at most 30% of the papers can be accepted. This means that for every conference that is organized by IEEE, usually at least 70% of the papers are rejected. And actually, this is a best case scenario because in many conferences that are organized today, the acceptance rate is actually in the low teens, if not even in the single digits. So we, it is not uncommon to have maybe 75, 80% or even 85% of the papers being rejected. So this naturally means that many great papers are obviously rejected for one reason or another. Another important thing to realize is that research is an iterative process and, and the rejections are just a part of this process. So if you take this with a positive attitude, you work on the paper, you improve it, and you resubmit it, there is a highly chance that your paper is eventually going to be accepted. And I'm going to provide you some suggestions on how to do this later on in this video. Finally, I also want to point out is that if we look at everyone CV, even some of the best scientists in our field, it looks like they have this incredible set of impressive achievements and especially a long list of publications. However, if you would look at their CV, including the rejected publications, that CV, I'm sure, would be much, much longer. We just don't know about those reje rejections. So, so that is just part of the process. And what has just happened to you is just what happens to everybody. So you need a positive attitude in order to keep working and then eventually get your paper. Accepted. Let's now understand the reasons behind the rejections of our paper. So first off, while we do this, we really need to be honest with ourselves. It is too easy to just blame some external entity, a reviewer, the editor, or someone else that caused this paper to be rejected while our papers were just perfect and there is no reason why I should change anything. So there is a very bad attitude that will really not get you anywhere in publishing this paper in particular, but also in academia in general. It is possible that with this paper, you just had bad luck. For example, you may have found a reviewer which is particularly harsh, particularly selective, or just inattentive, provide you a not so good review, and with these very low acceptance rates, which are common today, then your paper just doesn't make the cut and gets rejected. So in this case, you should take this as a positive news, since it is a good indication that your paper could be accepted in the future if you don't find another reviewer like that. Another possibility is that the venue where you submit the paper is a very, very high quality venue, which is very selective. There are some journals and conferences that only accept extremely high quality papers that really innovate the field and have groundbreaking contributions. So if this is not the case for your field, maybe that is just the reason why your paper is not being accepted and you could submit it somewhere else with a better chance of getting it published. There's a good chance that your paper has been rejected because there is something wrong with it. I made a full video about the most common reasons for which papers are rejected, so make sure to check it in the link up there. But here, let's go over some of these reasons. So one of the most common reasons is that your paper has a bad story. So it does not provide sufficient motivation for this paper, and also it doesn't well describe the problem that has been addressed as an important problem that needs to be 
sold. So if this is lagging, there is a high chance that your paper is not going to be reviewed positively. Additionally, your paper may lack sufficient novelty. So if there are many other solutions in the state of the art that address this or a similar problem, the reviewers may see the contribution of this paper and not sufficiently novel in order to justify the publication. Your contribution may also just be incremental with respect to what already exists. And so the reviewer may not see a reason in order to accept this paper. Additionally, there could be also some technical problems with your paper. So some technical reasons that are basically scientific mistakes that need to be solved in order for the paper to be accepted. And you need to recognize that. And if the reviewer is right, you need to solve this issue in order to get your paper accepted. Finally, the experimental results also may not be well designed. They may be very limited. They may not consider a realistic scenario. And so overall, they could not be very convincing. I made a full video on how to design the experimental results section, so make sure you check that also in the link up there. So overall, read the reviews and understand exactly what are the feedback that the reviewers are providing you and try to address these feedbacks before you submit your next version of the paper. Otherwise, there is a high chance that you're going to get the same exact comment and your paper is going to be rejected again. Let's now go over some best practices in order to avoid your paper to be rejected again. So first off, you should have a positive attitude in dealing with this rejection. You should not see this as the end of the world. And at the same time, you should not see this as the world is not understanding my research that is so fundamental and so perfect that should be accepted and nobody really understands what I'm doing. You should really read the reviews understand the reasons why your paper has been rejected, work hard to improve the paper, and then resubmit it. But it's very important to say here, they should be really ready to work hard on it. Sometimes you should change the paper completely from the beginning to the end. It's not just some small tweaks that you can do and then just resubmit it as it is. It can happen that sometimes, for example, the story was not good. You change the story, you do some cosmetic editing to the paper, and then you just resubmit it and you get it accepted. But sometimes it happens, and it happened to me as well as an editor and as a reviewer and as a technical program chair to see some papers that really could not be published at all. Those papers should be either thrown away or they should be completely rewritten and changed. And the contribution should be significantly expanded in order to have a minimal chance to be actually accepted. So be ready to work hard is really extremely important. Additionally, you should find a good venue. You should understand what is a good journal or conference where your paper could fit. As I mentioned before in this video, there are some venues that are extremely selective. It is very important to publish in those venues. You should make sure that your contribution is good enough in order to publish in those venues. If it is not, there is no point in submitting. So you can either decide to improve your paper and submit it then at one of those venues once it is ready, or you can decide that this is the contribution that you have now, and then you are going to submit it, maybe in a medium tier journal or conferences. If you have no idea what is high tier, low tier, you can look at some rankings online or have an idea at least of how this conference or journal compared to others. So another advice is to get your paper reviewed by your advisor, by other professors, by friends and colleagues before you submit it because it is much better to get feedback before the paper is submitted than at the end once it is rejected. Another final suggestion is that you should review papers yourself. So if your advisor gives you the chance, or maybe other professors that you know give you the chance, accept papers to review for conferences and for journals, have an idea of what other people are doing, how to provide feedback, and how to write a review. And I made a full video on understanding the peer review process and reviewing papers. So make sure to check that in the link up there. And once you have done that, that will give you an idea of what the reviewers are looking for. And so will also help you writing your own paper and get it accepted. I hope this video was useful. Please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the description below. Thank you very much, and see you next time.